Hello again, everybody. Jim Hickey coming back to you from WebsitePresence.org with the Part B portion of the preliminary keyword evaluation video. That's all part of the video series that's associated with the Keywords Research Demystified eBook that was released coincidentally with this video series. Okay, we're here to actually go through the steps that I talked about in that last video, and I'll do that in a minute, but there's something I want to point out. Although I'm giving you the pieces of a keyword research system that you can employ, and although when you do those pieces religiously, you're going to increase your chances of getting your content noticed in whatever ways people are searching for things, whether it's on the search engines or on hub pages or easy in articles or YouTube, whatever the case may be. Remember, when we're doing things in Google, it's really a proxy to see are people really searching those things, how frequently and what the competition is like. Um, it will up your odds. It's not going to be the magic switch where you just click the switch and all of a sudden traffic pours in and then dollars pour in. You know, there's a lot more involved than that. You're upping your chances. Keep that in mind. This is a business. It takes time. The other thing is, um, you know, when I go through this process, this is the first part of the process I work through. Um, then after I get my keyword list of things I want to target for content for sites or for articles, whatever the case may be, you know, I go in and double check a few of those to make sure things are exactly where they want them to be. It's just me being cautious. Uh, when I invoke that next level of, you know, research, that again further increases my odds. And even when I go to start to plan how I'm going to use those keywords and content or to create a site, whatever the case may be, I'm also going to be drawing upon the experience I've gained over the years. I, I assembled, uh, created a site almost a year ago that um, for every term that I targeted for that site, which is a very specific niche, sub niche of a niche, um, it allowed me to get into a, a, a larger niche that I was having trouble getting into and it's being very productive, I might add. But anyways, um, even as I did that, and I put it together, and a lot of those terms started to rank fairly quickly within weeks, uh, realistically, where they started to generate some traffic. That tra traffic has built over time, over the last you know year, effectively, to the point where every term I've targeted, even one I didn't necessarily target, are now on page one of Google. And for all the ones I purposefully targeted, they are now in position one or two. And so that helps bring in traffic every day. Now when I go out to forums and do my little thing on forums, that gives a little burst of traffic. And if I produce an article and it goes out to easy an article, well it helps keep my site listed and where it is in the search engines, which is cool. But occasionally if I do that research right, you know, some people search there and I get a little more burst of things. If I put something out on YouTube, I get a little burst coming from YouTube. So um, all these things end up playing together. My point here is that this is a business. It takes time, it takes direction, it takes thought, and, but when you take those steps, when you do these steps, and you just remember that it does take time, it's not all going to just turn on a switch in 24 hours, 48 hours, a week, or even two weeks. Um, when you have your little successors and your little failures, if you learn from those, adapt, and adjust, it's all going to be good. It'll all end up working for you in the end. But just remember, it's not instantaneous, and there are no guarantees. This is a business. There are risks. Just accept that. Part of your experience plays into this. You'll learn how to do things better and get better at it in the future. Okay, but now to the subject at hand. We need to go complete those steps that's associated with this preliminary keyword evaluation. First place we need to go, we want to go find the search volume the Google Keyword Tool. And as I mentioned, I've given you the links in a couple of different places, but there's a far easier way to get to it. If you don't remember those or don't have the live links uh, readily available to you, all you got to do is go to Google Search Engine, type in Keyword Tool. You may not even get that far before it comes up. You can just click on it and get to the Keyword Tool directly. Okay, So, let's come over into Google. Type in Keyword 
I won't even have to type in the whole keyword tool. It does give me, you know, their little paid advertisement. I won't cost them any money because I'm not sure that that won't bring me to someplace else. It should be hyperlinked in. But the first organic listing right here is exactly what we want, just as I said it would be. And I haven't even got the whole keyword tool phrase typed in yet. So let's just click on that. We'll come over to the AdWords keyword tool. And it'll open up. It'll open up. It'll, oh, there we go. Yay. Okay, so as I'm running Camtasia and the internet and everything else, well, I said that's all I have open right now. My computer is being relatively slow, so if it takes a second, sorry for that. Here's what the keyword tool looks like when you first open it. Here's the place where you're going to want to enter your seed keyword. Okay, here are the, the you know I mentioned something about location and language. Well, here's where those things are defined. Google just selects those based on where you're actually initiating this. Uh, search from. And since I'm in the U.S., obviously speaking English, at least I hope I'm speaking English, um, it, it's going to default to those things. And most of the time, that's pretty much what you're going to want to use. Now, if you happen to be in another part of the country, like Japan, and there was a certain product that was only available in Japan, you wanted to focus on that, you can go into advanced off options and change that. Most of the time, you're probably not going to want to do that. I'm not going to bother going through that here, but just to let you know where that is. Down here are the columns where we want the data uh, uh, to be provided once we do our search. Uh, you'll notice that I think if you go back and look at the slides in the last video, which I only captured a week ago, um, the columns that Google is even providing by default today is different than it was a week ago. You know, people complain about how quickly Google is changing things and trying to mess up the world, trying to do a better job doing what they're doing, delivering quality search to the people who are searching. Um, but, you know, in reality, the web is a very um, dynamic place. I mean, well, actually, think about the people complaining about what Facebook's been doing of late, changing this, that, and the other thing as they're trying to do things differently. So, you know, you just have to be aware, learn, adapt, and adjust. Just keep that in mind. So it's not the same as it was. The competition column is there, which I'm going to want to get rid of. It has my keyword, which will give other keywords that are associated with this keyword that could be of interest to us global searches, local monthly searches. The CPC uh, column isn't there yet, but we can get back to that in a minute. The local trends thing is gone. As a matter of fact, they've done away with it totally. Go figure. But if we want to go in and make some adjustments to the columns, we can uncheck the competition, which will make that one go away. We can check the estimated CPC, average CPC, excuse me. That will actually light that up. Uh, there's other things in there which are new. They've, they've all appeared this week. Ad share, search share, extracted from web page. I believe that all has more to do with the AdWords. I don't care about that, so we're not even going to worry about those. These are what I want to uh, use. These are what I use most frequently. This is what's going to give us the data we need. So click Apply. Competition's gone. Estimated. Average CPC is in. That's our little term to tell us, well, might this be uh, commercially viable? You know, is there some commerciality associated with this, especially if it's something that's product related? Okay. The term I'm going to type in here, which is different than what we've done before, is um, forever blue jeans. Because I heard about this cool jean company that, that um, I think somebody said it was forever blue jeans. Now, obviously, I'd normally be doing this in search, but I want to know if I could create a site because I saw these blue jeans that look really cool and uh, the people around here seem to be going nuts over them, so there might be some money to be made, right? So, you know, that's forever blue jeans. Uh, is, this, is this viable? Do people search for this? Is it, you know, do I have a lot of competition if I decide to go this route? Actually, there's a reason why I'm doing this, and I'll point it out why uh, later. So I've got my seed keyword in there now, so we're ready to move forward. The other thing I have to do is enter the capture code to make sure I'm not a robot. Okay. Then hit the search button. Google will go off and do its thing. Yay, and it took the capture. It can list up to, normally, the, the default setting is to give you possibly 50 settings. Now, I know, because I did this a little while ago, that this is only going to give us like 15 keywords, because it's a relatively narrow search. But like I said, I picked this specifically for a reason. Most searches you do, it'll give you 50. It may have several hundred more available. You can get up to 100 without doing going through some other steps just by coming down here, dropping down this box, and selecting the 100. So just keep that in mind for future references. Today, I don't care. Now, what did I say? We, we wanted to do an evaluation of the search volume. Uh, but we want it to be exact match. And when Google 
keyword tool goes out and does the first search, the data it pulls in is the broad match. That's when those t words in your phrase could be anywhere in the phrase that was typed into the search engines by the person doing the search. So sometimes it's relevant, sometimes it may not be relevant. Uh, broad match looks cool, at least from a search perspective. From a CPC perspective, it doesn't look so cool, but um, not overly viable. So maybe this doesn't have something to do with chains. Anyways, we'll find out. Um, and you'll notice over here, the match types broads lit. Okay, now normally I just uncheck that and check exact to get what the exact numbers were. I'm just going to check the exact now because that will look like the slide in the last presentation. We have our open broad match. We have our closed in square brackets exact match. And look what happened to the numbers. Well, you may recall that we want a minimum, hypothetically, of a 1,000 searches per month, exact match searches. 1646 doesn't quite cut it. Now, you know, at this point, if there wasn't some other driving factor here, like I saw some other terms down here that might be more realistic, I'd be saying bye and go on to the next thing that I was interested in, right? Because it doesn't even make sense. But like I said, there's a reason I picked this keyword term. So we're going to follow through with the process just so you can see how the steps work, right? So We've done the search. We got our exact match numbers up. And like I said, if I was doing this for real, I would uncheck broad match. Right now, Google will make the adjustment. Now, they're all just the exact match. So we could go through here and figure out which terms meet our criteria of 1,000 or more. Okay, And you know, once you do that, and even though we have our seed keyword we're starting with, you know, you're going to want to take note of those other keywords that might be over 1,000, because that could be additional content or words you use in your content or whatever the case may be. All right, so you just want to remember that from the for the future. Also, one other thing I want to say: this is particularly important if you got like a hundred different keywords here, and a lot of those have numbers that are really decent. You may want to export this into something like Excel, a spreadsheet. And you can do that via this function here, the download function. Okay, like when you press this, it'll actually bring up a little window that says, "How do you want to save it as a text file, as a CSV file, which is a." Uh, what comment the limited file whatever the case may be but it'll go into Excel so you can use it directly there we're not going to do that here today what I want to do is I want to be able to go out to the Google search engine now to, to do the next level of analysis and to do that directly from here this is a live link if I click this term um, it'll just go out use that information to open up the Google search function Google search engine and in this case, I'm using Chrome, Google Chrome, so um, it did it in a new tab. And now I have my, the way most people search, broad search term entered into the Google search engine for Forever Blue Jeans, got 963,000 results, okay? But, but that doesn't mean anything yet, because we want this in quotes to find out you know how many times that phrase occurs within the page not just those words this is just telling us how many times those words occur within this content but what do you see when you're looking through this well if you look at the organic listings the first thing you see is Neil Diamond uh, for those of you who don't know he's kind of a contemporary pop singer uh, getting kind of old nowadays he's older than I am but um, you know really started back in the 60s 70s 80s 90s anyways I think the song dates back into the 80s or something even though it says 96 there, I think that was a re-release. Um, but it's a song. I'm looking for blue jeans. Huh. Then if I look down a little further where it says shopping, it says figurines and salt and pepper shaker sets. And Wow, what's going on? Oh, but if I look over here at the paid ads, well, heck, AdWords understands what I'm looking for. They're delivering me blue jeans. Interesting. Scroll down here, what do we get? Well, most of this is still what? This is all songs, music. Oh, we do have clothing, but it's not the clothing I was looking for. It's an apron. Well, anyway, what's my point here? Relevancy. Broad match. These words can be anywhere within that content. So what am I getting? I'm getting music. just happens to be that it's even close in the title. I'm getting aprons. I'm, I am getting some jeans, but they're over in the, the, the uh, paid search, not in the organic search. And I'm getting figurines, which also in this case happens to also have those words pretty close together, but there is another word right in between, as there is here in Forever in Blue Jeans is a song by Neil Diamond. So, 
Anyways, keep that in mind. Next thing we want to do to get at the time number of pages that this is actually this phrase is used on as a phrase, not as just three separate words. We need to enclose that in quotes or speech marks, as somebody would say. Um, hit the search term. It'll come back and show us there's, well, the number decreased. We only have 475 as opposed to over 900,000 uh, pages. But do you remember what the goal was for this? Less than 30,000. And I said that number is a little bit fudgeable. Like sometimes I'll still think about it if it's approaching 100,000. 400,000 is where I'm starting to get leery. Now, we already know that the search volume doesn't work, so it's already washed. But again, something you want to keep in mind. But here's what you want to do. You just close this in quotes, hit search. It will then tell you the number of times, or excuse me, the number of pages that Forever Blue Jeans as a phrase exists within the listings that are provided. And there's too many of them. The next thing we wanted to check is how many times that's in the title. And you do that, but we can just come back up here and add the all in title operator, which is all in title and a colon, before the term in speech marks or quotations. Hit the search to make sure it's done its thing. And it has, excellent, what do we get? 62,000. Well, that's lower than 475,000. But if you recall, for the times, or for the number of pages we want to see with this term in the title, we wanted that to be 10,000 or less. This is six times that. So this term fails across the board. The good thing about this keyword term is it also showed you one of the problems with broad match search, and that's it can give you more non-relevant results than anything else, which is indeed what this is doing. Okay, So that's something important to keep in mind. Now, later in the series, once I get through the overall you know, evaluation process, the system, I told you there'd be where I show you where things work and where it doesn't work. Um, so well, we've got a case where it's more realistic so you can get a better sense of where some numbers in the future. But right now, I think that gives you a pretty good idea of how to access these tools, how to go about entering the right types of information in the right fields in order to get the results you want in order to conduct your analysis. You also have something to keep in mind. This all takes time. It's part of a business. There'll be successes. There'll be failures. Every step you go in this process, keyword research, to get a little deeper, a little more information, check out things a little bit more on the competition level, you're going to have more and more successes but nothing is a perfect system. Sometimes there's going to be some failures. Just keep that in mind as well. Learn from it, grow from it, and prosper from it. Anyways, we'll be talking to you again soon. Have a good day.